In this video, I wanna talk about how to extend the life of the compressor in your air conditioner. I also wanna to touch on locked rotor amps, when a compressor locks up and fails to start, how to measure startup amps to see if it's locked up, and also what you could do to try to get it to start by putting in one of these things. I'm also gonna be measuring the startup amperage or inrush current before we put one of these in and after to see what kind of a difference it'll make. And before we begin, I just wanna look at two ratings on the nameplate right here. So this sticker is sitting in the sun. I guess with time it faded out, you're probably not gonna be able to see the numbers, but you can actually still read them. So in the section that says compressor, we have our RLA, sometimes it'll be FLA. This just stands for rated load amps. This is at 10.4. And that just means that while the unit is running, the compressor should be drawing less than 10.4 amps. If it's over that, the compressor will start to overheat. But we're not gonna be talking about that today. Today, I wanna focus on the LRA, which is locked rotor amps. And what this means is that if the compressor, when it starts up, draws more than 54, right here it says 54, if it draws more than 54 amps at startup, the compressor is likely gonna lock up and fail to start. So the way electrical motors and compressors work is when they start up, that starting point, like the fraction of a second to one second long, when the unit is just starting, that's when it draws the most amperage, that's when it takes the most power. That's why sometimes when the AC unit turns on, you see the lights in your house dim, because it's just sucking a lot of power up to start. And after it's already running, then it doesn't require as much power to continue to run just like pushing a car. You know, when you start pushing it, it's really heavy, but after it's already rolling, then it gets easier to keep pushing it. Similar concept. So during this startup phase, that's when the most wear and tear happens on compressors and motors. So what this guy does right here, this, actually it's called, it's called a compressor saver. And I have a video on how to install one of these if you wanna know how to install it. So I'm not gonna talk about that here, but this compressor saver kit, what that does is it cuts down the amount of amps that the unit requires at startup or the amount of amps that it's drawing during the startup. And once again, in those other capacitor videos, I talk about more details on how that works and why that works, so I won't go into that here. But basically, it cuts the amp draw at startup. So if you have locked rotor amps, if the amp draw of your unit is too high, the compressor, when it starts, it's gonna sound like it's just buzzing, and then it fails to start. The first thing I would check if that's actually what's happening at your place is the capacitor and make sure that the capacitor is good because that could be caused by that. Once again, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video either because that's not the point of this video, but I do have videos on how to check and replace a capacitor if you need more info on that. So if your capacitor is good, you check that you verified it, yet your compressor is still humming and not starting, then either something's wrong with the wiring, maybe you have a burnt wire somewhere, or the compressor is indeed locked up and it's failing to start. And that's what I wanna focus on in this video. So I wanna check locked rotor amps, and then I wanna install this hard start kit or compressor saver kit and check amps before and after we install this thing and see what difference it makes. And what we're gonna be looking for is the inrush current. If your meter measures that, mine doesn't. So it's either inrush or the maximum amps. So in my case, on my meter, I just switch my meter to amps right here. And then I hold, I press the max button right here. So max appears. So now when I'm gonna be measuring the amp draw, this is gonna record my maximum reading, whatever the max is. Because when the unit starts, the amount of amps, the largest amount of amps that draws at startup, that only lasts for a split second. So there's a good chance you're not even gonna catch it on your meter. But when you have it set to maximum, it records whatever the max amount of amps was. So that'll catch our startup amps. And where you want to measure this is on the common wire coming from the compressor. If we look at the wiring diagram on the back of the access door. By the way, I also have a really long video on completely breaking down this wiring diagram, how to read it and everything. So if you're interested, you could look at that video. But if you look at the wiring diagram, Find the compressor. Here's the C, which is common. That wire coming from the compressor is gonna be black. So we wanna put our amp clamp on the black wire coming from the compressor. If by chance you're working on a three-phase compressor, then it does not matter which wire you put your amp clamp on. 
This is the wire that's coming from the compressor going to the contactor. So I'll put my amp clamp right on there. See the crosshairs on my meter? So right in the middle of the crosshairs is pretty much the optimal spot to put the wire. So right in the middle of the amp clamp. And then I'm just going to very carefully press in the contactor for a couple of seconds so we can get our maximum amp draw on our meter. And I'm actually going to adjust my range too. Let's put the decimal over here. Go back to maximum and press our contactor in. Okay. So we got 56.5 for our startup amps. That's how high it spiked up. And our locked rotor amps are actually rated at 54. So it's actually very dangerously close to getting to the point where it's not going to start up. It's going to lock up. So we're already at 56, and the highest it should be going is 54. So if it keeps climbing, I mean, the older the unit is, the higher this will probably get. If it keeps climbing, then there's a good chance that that compressor is gonna start to lock up. So what I'm gonna do now is install this compressor saver kit. I'm gonna do this off camera. I'm gonna install this, and then we're gonna take our maximum amp draw again to see how much it changes it. Okay, so I have the potential relay in, my start capacitor, so the compressor saver kit. I got it all hooked up. And now, let's just see what kind of a difference it makes in our startup amperage. So once again, let's take my wire from the compressor, the common wire, which is this guy right here. If my memory serves me right, we were at 56. So let's try starting it up once more and see if this makes any difference, the start capacitor. And of course that made a huge difference. Look at that, zero amps. Actually, I just forgot to turn my power back on. Let's see, let's turn the power back on. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. So we got 53.5 amps, which is actually pretty surprising to me because usually this drops by a lot more. Usually it drops by at least 15 amps. So a difference of three amps, that wasn't much at all. I mean, it did get us below that 54 threshold, but yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Usually I see a lot more of a difference than just that. On some bigger condenser units where the locked rotor amps are like 80, sometimes when I put in a hard start kit, I can see that dropped to about, I don't know, like 60 or 55 amps at startup. So the difference is pretty drastic. On this unit, it's smaller. The difference was not much at all. But I am a firm believer that this compressor saver kit will definitely extend the life of that compressor. Well, anyway, that is all I had for you. I hope you found this video useful. You got some good information out of it. What locked rotor amps are, how to check the startup amperage, and what you could do to try to decrease that. If you have any further comments or suggestions about all the stuff you saw here, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out, and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, did you know that the rainbow is not an arc, but actually a full circle? I had no idea, so this was a revelation for me. And for those of you that had no idea as well, now you know too.